Lutz are here. My name is Joellen Lutz. I chair the Board of Assessment and Review along with my colleagues. Bob uh, Phillips. Mike Koo. And our staff, if you want to introduce yourselves. Uh, Dan Seaman. Paul Stout. Ted Cobb. And uh, we'd like you to introduce yourselves. Sure. Uh, my name is John Muir. Um, I work with the law firm of Kozloff and Stout and Wyoming in Berks County, Pennsylvania. And our law firm is the solicitor to the Anvil Leona School District. Okay. Um, Ryan Bowman does primarily their school work, and I do primarily their assessment appeal work. Okay. And that's why I'm here. And Andrew Hood, H O O D. I represent the property owner. Okay. And what we'd like to start with is asking you to look at this picture of the aerial photography and telling us the center there, the white pro um, ceiling or roof. Is that the property you're here to discuss today? Yes, I think that's the 3160 Hartford Drive that's it. in Lebanon. Okay, thank you. Then what our a process is that we will listen to what you have to say, but we'd like you to, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is cracking. We'd like you to start by telling us uh, what you think the value of the property is and why. And I understand this is a little bit unusual because there's a division in the township lines, or borough and township, to be exact. And then we might ask questions as we go. When we're done, it may take a couple of weeks till we get back to you because our solicitor couldn't be here today. We might want to consult with him. We'll reserve that right. Um, but at this time, the floor is yours. So, Andrew Cleona, you filed the right. appeal. So we'll listen to what you have to say. So, uh, all right. So, um, I do not have an appraiser to present this evening or this afternoon regarding valuation. Um, so, I, um, um, I know Lebanon County. If if an appraiser is involved, generally it's a selection by the assessment board as opposed to the school district. Um, um, so, I I do not have an appraiser to present testimony. Um, we filed an appeal on this parcel uh, due to. I'll say two issues as outlined in our appeal. Um, number one is the valuation of the property as set forth in our appeal. It's currently assessed at about $9.6 million. Uh, with your uh, applicable common level ratio, that suggests an implied fair market value of, say, $13.3 million. Um, the property, it's our understanding that the property sold on November 2nd of 2020 for $32 million. Um, and um, it's our position, um, hopefully supported by an expert, that the fair market value of the warehouse uh, was $32 million back in November 2nd of 2020. Applying the um, implied, or applying the common level ratio to the purchase price of $32 million um, again, would suggest that the property is um, underassessed. So that's part, I'll say part one of the issue from the school district that we believe that the property based on its recent sale in November of 2020 is underassessed. The second part is that this parcel uh, before, I'll say this line, there was a different line um, uh, between the borough of Anvil uh, excuse me, the borough of Cleona and North Lebanon Township. And um, until we filed this appeal, um, Andal Cleona School District did not receive any tax dollars for this parcel whatsoever. Um, so I think um, in some communications with Mr. Seaman's office and the school district, it's my understanding that the um, township line or the borough line has been reevaluated and it appears as you can kind of see in the photograph the lower left hand corner that um, a portion of the structure is located within the borough some of the land is actually located in the borough um, and it's our position on behalf of the school district um, that some of those taxable proceeds from the entire structure um, should be um, should benefit uh, the school district. So those are really the two issues. One, valuation, uh, although I don't have testimony to present regarding that. And two, even, sorry to say, if we don't get past two, we're not getting to number one because 
as of now, the school district receives no benefit, no tax benefits for the property. So you're asking to be recognized? Correct, as, as having, I believe, part of that um, part of that structure, part of the warehouse within the four corners of the borough, uh, which would then... And you uh, said you do have expert uh, opinion on that. Well, now we have, I, I believe the assessment office... Re oh, you're the expert. Yeah, so well, I, I think them. the assessment office reevaluated, I guess, the boundary line. My mm -hmm. experience with municipal boundaries, it can be very gray as to where a property is. There's, in the assessment world, there's a mansion rule as far as, you know, how is it divided up if there's a large structure that is over two municipality boundary lines or even county lines. Well, um, and we, once we got the new imagery is when we saw that the building now is partly in Cleona. So we have no problem with adjusting that breakdown between. Uh, there is maybe a slight issue because of the Lerda there. Uh, you would have Lerda in exactly. North Lebanon, or no, it's not in North Lebanon. To the other, whatever school district. Is. Yeah, Cornwall, Lebanon. Yeah, Cornwall, right? Not in North Lebanon Township, uh, but and then you would not have it in Cleona Borough or Anvil Cleona School District at this point. So, uh, but, but we have no problem making that uh, breakdown change. So yeah, so yeah, the boundary line before was more, I guess, rectangular. Is that right, Mr. Seaman? Uh, you want me to point it out on the yeah, piece? Go ahead. Yeah, so on the plan, and, and the plan was incorrect. Um, we knew it was incorrect. And the plan had the line going like this, right across here, uh, coincident with this parcel line here. The line's actually over here. Um, and because the plan had that significant error, you know, at the time, and not having imagery showing where the actual building sat, we decided, well, the vast, vast majority is in North Lebanon. Let's put it there until we get new imagery to confirm. But he, sorry to say, even with the old imagery, none of the tax benefits were flowing through to the borough and or then to the school Correct. district. Correct, yeah. I'd like to acknowledge that our administrator, Jamie Wogelmuth, has joined us so you know who else is in the room. I don't know if you saw that or not. Yeah, I have it. Thanks. That's all I have to really say on this issue. Okay, right. then um, let's see. Mr. Hood, Andrew Hood, you're yes. also an attorney. Correct. And you represent the property owner. Correct. What would you like to say, sir? Well, I'll start backwards. I'll start with what we agree on. I think Mr. Muir is right. I have personally inspected the property and walked it. The property line clearly cuts across that corner of the building. I'm not going to say exactly where. But you can see there's an old road bed there, which is easy to see when you go out to the property. You stand there and look and it clearly cuts across the building my only point on that is I would leave that to the assessor I think there has to be an adjustment between the two school districts I would leave that to them though I don't think it's as simple as saying it's a simple nine or ten percent I think you have to look at what the improvements are if you look you can see all the parking all the pad sites and everything are on the front or on the side in the front that is clearly our property they're taxed on those assessments or those improvements. So I think the assessor has to go back, look at their property record cards, and come up with the determination. Uh, that Are being there said, utilities or um, stormwater drainage and things that's, on that? If end? I can approach, that's actually up here. Storm, as I understand it, it's right up in here. So the property line goes up like that. This is where the stormwater drainage is. Okay, right so there. that back corner there is Correct. part of it. Off right. the cul de sac. And that's our property. Right. We're assessed on that. Water so, lines or nothing go through the property in front of the plan? That I do not know where they go. Okay. So I have no problem with the school district getting, having standing and getting a portion. I think where the argument is is what they get. So the first thing is the assessor has to make that determination. The second issue is although there was a sale um, under Pennsylvania law, a sale is evidence of value, it's not conclusive. Um, this one is complicated because, as you indicated, there is an abatement so it creates other problems. Um, and the issue of using a sale as a basis for an assessment appeal is currently in front of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court as we speak. It was actually argued, I think, three weeks ago. Um, so we're awaiting an opinion on that. So with that said, I, I would suggest the board 
deny the appeal, sustain the assessment. I think the assessment is fine. It's just a matter of how it gets divvied up. And then as we progress, uh, we can figure out what the valuation is. How many years are left on the letter? Uh, I think it just started last year. Oh. Yeah. So I think there's four, four left. Uh, my understanding is four years left. Again, we're not party to that, but that's my research suggests yeah. that there's four. Thank you. Four years left. Yeah, that, according to the property owner, it actually started a year early. The document, as I read it, <coughs> by, says it starts tax year, which the property owner interpreted to mean one one. The school district interpreted it to mean their their year seven one. So it started a year early. It makes no difference to us whether you get it on the front end or the back end. But, or the yeah, back it started end. Started in the middle of the year. Correct. Mm -hmm. On this, I think it started seven one, which is what the school right. district says is their tax right. year, and, and they're correct. It is. The document doesn't make it clear which tax year we're talking about. My um, two, que tw two questions might be one, but did the sale include inventory and did the sale include um, any equipment or like those storage racks and things like that? Not to my knowledge, no. But you don't know for sure? I don't know for sure. Okay. That is something that would have to be determined that could be separated out from the sale. Correct. It was a bill to suit, so I don't know exactly you know, what the negotiations were. Okay. And that's exactly what I'm saying. We don't know the terms of the sale. We know what the sale price is, but we don't know how it was negotiated or what it includes. Okay. And, and, I'm sorry, if I may, one other Please. thing that's we're talking about the drawing. Mm -hmm. As I understand it, Mr. Seaman, um, again, I'm not holding you to it. Your thoughts are, you know, that corner of roughly 9,000 square feet, the entire building's 268,000 square feet or so. Um, so it's not a large percentage, but it's also an additional 4.9 4. acres of land, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, which would, which again would be on the borough side as opposed to the township side. So it's a small portion of structure. I think you've made a yeah. good argument that you should, and he even concurs I, I concur. that yeah, they, you they do deserve started. a piece of the pie. Right. Sure. So we have to determine how much. <laughs> means, yeah, what percentage? <clears throat> or on square footage or however we figure it out. Right. And the LERDA or the abatement that's in place, Mr. Muir's client was never consoled, or there was never consultation with them because right. the property records at the time showed it wasn't in that school district. So I was kind of shocked when I saw it because when I pulled up the tax map, the new, this is the one that was up, the new one was already up. I was like, how did this happen? Because it's clearly on there but if you read the assessment record it only has the one school district so i think that's something else that has to be addressed with, with mr muir's client whether they're even amenable to uh, to an abatement and then that again goes to value we do do regular flyovers and that's what you see now it is a relatively new map but it is also uh, an accurate map yes the detail technology keeps getting better and better absolutely are there any other questions gentlemen Commissioners, no. anybody on this side of the table? No, Any closing remarks? No, no. Thank Anyone you both. For thank coming. you very much. Okay. Just a question: Anybody have a suggestion about the, the formula as to how we calculate that percentage of value? Yeah, um, I I don't, sir. Um, I mean the. <clears throat> um, I'll say this is pretty fluid, and that we just kind of received the updated map last week I think maybe yeah. just just say just the other day it wasn't yesterday but it was mm -hmm. in lawyer terms it was relatively recently <laughs> so I don't I, we haven't really had an opportunity to to talk about that mr. Warner and I when I spoke to this morning he knows that the line kind of changed but we didn't talk is that 10% 2% mm -hmm. and certainly not 50% but we really haven't had an opportunity to have that discussion so my response today would be if the valuation, if the assessment doesn't change, it's really inconsequential to us. It may change the abatement slightly, correct? Not enough to get twisted about. Mm -hmm. um, if, the, if the assessment goes up, then it's a totally different story, correct? Okay. Well, we will um, seek counsel on this. Make sure we have all of our ducks in a row, this and a get back one. to you in writing with our decision. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for coming in. Nice meeting you, sir.